up guys? Welcome back to another GeekoWatt video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to put together an awesome future-proof system around a $600 budget that you've actually got a decent chance of being able to build as we head up to the holiday season and of course Christmas. I'll be running you through all of the components that I selected and why, how you can potentially pick these up at some decent price points. I'll also be showing you how to put the system together from start right through to finish before looking at the performance, seeing just how well a budget PC like this stacks up in the latest AAA titles. We'll also be of course testing the brand new Call of Duty and Forza Horizon 5 to see just how future-proofed this system is. Let's dive into the video though after a quick ad from today's video sponsor. Corsair's M65 RGB Ultra Wireless builds upon the legendary M65 design with the latest Corsair Slipstream Wireless tech and much more. With a 26,000 DPI Corsair Marksman sensor that can be adjusted in DPI steps as small as one, this mouse means business. Adjustable weight allows you to find your perfect center of gravity, while Omron optical switches deliver hyper-fast and precise responses. Everything you love about the M65 in 2021, now wireless. Check it out at the links in the description below. As usual, we're going to kick this build off by looking at the CPU, the CPU cooler, our motherboard, and our RAM. Let's start things off with the motherboard though. This is kind of the beating heart of the system. It's what connects everything else together and gives you the option to easily upgrade your PC down the line if you wish and dictates what other components you're able to use in your build. Inside the box, you'll find one of these. This is a rear IO shield. This is what we'll use a bit later on when we install the motherboard into the case. You'll then find the motherboard itself. Now this right here is the MSI B550M Pro VDH. This is a more budget oriented B550 board, but crucially, you still get four RAM DIMM slots and an M.2 heatsink. This basically covers you off for Gen 4 drives, plenty of memory, dual channel memory, and all in all gives you the feature set that you want, especially on a budget. At the rear, you've got plenty of USB 3s, and while sadly there's no USB-C, for me at this system, that's not a complete deal breaker. I'll be pairing the motherboard up with the CPU choice today. Now this is gonna be a little bit of a controversial one. It's AMD's Ryzen 3 3100. Now, I know what you guys are thinking. Isn't this a really weak budget-oriented chip? Well, kind of. It comes in at MSRP under $100, which is kind of insane, and gives you similar performance to the 3300X, a very respectable budget CPU. If you've got some more cash to spend, pick up a Ryzen 5 like the 3600X or the 5600X. But if you're building on a budget, don't let this chip put you off. I'm going to install it into the motherboard nice and simply. On our board, we've got a little triangle on the top left corner of the CPU socket. And we've also got another triangle on the bottom left corner of the CPU, which will match up nice and easily. Drop your Ryzen chip into place, pop the arm back down, and your CPU is installed. In order to keep the CPU nice and chilly, I'll be coupling it up with a Ryzen stock cooler. You get this included for free in your CPU's box, making Ryzen an awesome value add. Typically, this will come with pre-applied thermal paste, but we've used this cooler before as we often reuse parts for our builds. So we'll need to drop a dab of our own on before popping the cooler down and screwing each of the corners in kind of a cross pattern. Don't screw one all the way in before starting the others as that will make your life a little bit easier. Plug up the four pin PWM fan header and you're pretty much off to the races. Next up on the list is our RAM or memory. Now I've gone for a 16 gigabyte kit from Corsair. This is actually a brand new DDR4 kit they've brought to market, which might seem weird in an era of DDR5. It's a super low profile kit with this nice white accent in that's going to look awesome in the case today. It's easily installed into the second and fourth RAM DIMM slots by pulling back the clips on each side of the DIMMs, lining up your memory and just sliding it into place. The Corsair logo should face that way with the label on the inner side of the RAM facing towards Towards me. Repeat for as many dims as you've got. As I say, if you've got two, you want the second and fourth slots. If you've got four, you want all four. I did tell a lie earlier as well. I forgot there is one more thing we need to install into the motherboard before the motherboard assembly, as it's often referred to, is complete. And that is the storage. This right here is Samsung's SSD 980. Not the 980 Pro, not the 980 Evo, if that's still a thing, but the plain and great value 980. This is a 500 gig M.2 SSD with speeds in the region of three and a half gigabytes a second. 
mode. It will be super snappy and give you some awesome performance without breaking the bank. Helping to avoid storage bottlenecks as well if you were to upgrade the graphics card later. This build is super upgradable. Drop in a new GPU and you haven't got to swap anything else out. Grab yourself a small screwdriver like this one, spin your motherboard around, locating this black heat spreader on top of the M.2 slot, uninstall the screws on the heat spreader itself. You then want to go ahead and just slide the drive in at a 45 degree angle and quite conveniently we don't actually need to secure it down with a screw at all because the standoff is the same we'll use to pop the heat shield or the heat sink back on. This means the heat sink itself will secure the drive nicely into place. Don't forget to remove the blue plastic sleeve in off the heat sink so it can make good contact with the SSD and with that all of our motherboard is basically done complete and ready to go. And with that, we can move it into the case choice for this system. Now this case might look familiar. It's Techware's Forge M, but it's a new version. It's the M squared. No, it's not, it's the M2. This is kind of an updated version. You still get all the great features from the Forge M that you know and love. You still get that really attractive price point and it looks aesthetically great. There's only one way though really to evaluate just how nice this case is, and that's to go ahead and get it unboxed. One of the big selling points for me about this case is that it's quite compact. With a smaller form factor, it's easier to fit on a desk or as part of a gaming setup that just doesn't take over the entire room it sits in. Okay, I must admit, I wasn't expecting this. The case is actually white inside. I am even more in love with this thing than I already was. Micro ATX, lots of ventilation, power supply shield, couple of RGB fans up front, and it's got a white interior. And that's gonna work really well, actually, with the accenting on the memory. Obviously, it's a shame the motherboard's not white as well, but for a budget price point, I mean, heck, even a high-end price point, you're not really going to be able to manage that. Now, this is the point in the video where we go ahead and match up some circles. If you're new to the channel, what that basically means is you need to locate each of the holes through the motherboard. So we've got three at the top here, a further three uh, across the middle, and then a further two along the bottom. These are what we then need to match up with the corresponding standoffs in the case to make sure that the motherboard doesn't ground itself out. At the top here, we've got one, two, and we just need to add a third one. We've then got one, two, and need to add a third one along the middle. And we've got the two at the bottom already in the right location. So add the two that we've circled, screw those in, and then we're able to install the motherboard. And don't forget to install your rear I.O. shield. If you forget to install the I.O. shield, it's not the end of the world. Technically, nothing will be broken. You'll just have to go ahead and uninstall the motherboard before popping the I.O. shield in and doing the whole thing over again. So save yourself the pain, do the I.O. shield now with the motherboard straight afterwards. With the motherboard installed, we can go ahead and install the penultimate component of the system today. This is the Zotac Gaming GTX 1650. Now, I know that buying a GPU in 2021 has been next to impossible, and unfortunately, I think it's going to be quite a bit of time before those shortages ease next year. In fact, we've made a video talking about why the shortages exist and why they might actually be easing soon. Now this isn't the perfect GPU for a system of this budget under normal circumstances, but it is capable of gaming at 1080p, it's 10 times more powerful than something like a GT 1030 or an APU, it's a fully fledged GPU with 4 gigabytes of video memory and plenty of horsepower for the latest games, but as I say hold tight because our full gaming benchmarks will be coming just a little bit later. Now in this case today we'll be installing the GPU into the top PCIe slot. That's this slot up here that's actually slightly reinforced. Make sure you push back the PCIe clip and then just kind of shadow the GPU over the slot you're looking to use. That will indicate which of our rear PCIe lanes need removing. For us, we just need to snap out the top and the second PCIe lane. These are the more budget oriented variety where you basically bend them, you give them a bit of a wiggle and you hope for the best. After a few seconds, they will just snap out of place. Be nice and gentle, don't rush it with these. Don't try and you know vigorously bend them back and get them out immediately. Fold it over, give it a bit of a shake back and forth. This one is much more stubborn than the last. <laughs> there we go, and the GPU will slide in. After that fact, much, much easier. We don't need GPU power for this card either. It's super power efficient, so we can install the power supply later and not worry about that fact. Talking of which, here it is. Now this is Cooler Master's MWE Gold 650. In previous budget builds on the channel, I've gone for a bare bones 500 watt unit. And frankly, that would be good enough for the system today. But I understand people's concern. I get that people want a slightly nicer power supply with a fully modular interface like this here, where you only plug in the cables you need. And I get from a future proofing and upgradability point of view that having some nice extra GPU power cables for your fancy new graphics card makes a lot of sense. You will pay more for the privilege 
if you'd like to save some money, pick up something like Cooler Master or EVGA's 500 watt units. I am going to actually walk you through as well in this video what cables you need to plug in. With the RGB fans and fan controller on the case, you will need to connect up a SATA power connector. That's this cable here and has these thin SATA power cables. You'll also want to pick yourself up one of these, a 24 pin motherboard power connector. That will of course power up the motherboard and I'll plug these in in just a moment. Before finally also taking an 8 pin CPU power connector. This will go to the top left of the motherboard, but as I say, I'll walk through those in just a moment. Plug all of your fully modular cables up to the power supply first, then screw the PSU in with the fan facing down or up. You've got vents on both sides, so it doesn't matter. And then we can connect up the biggest motherboard power connector like so, the CPU power cable to the top left hand side, and then the SATA power connector as required. And once that's done, our build is pretty much complete. One of the most simple PCs you'll ever build, but don't go anywhere. We've got lots of exciting things to come, including benchmarks of the new Call of Duty, Forza Horizon 5, and an epic glam montage before any of that to see just how good this system looks when it's all powered up. If you like the montages here, show us some love in the comments and get subscribed, but you guys know what's coming. Roll that montage. <laughs>